yeah, I'll just do a quick intro. So Ed is the is um, executive director of Crossref. I hope he's not going to bring us down and be a pit of party pooper. Pits are dead. Long live open infrastructure is the title. Are you ready to be convinced? Let's find out. So take it away. Thanks very much, Rachel. Very happy to be here. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, as Rachel said, I'm Ed Pence, Executive Director of Crossref. <clears throat> so to start off with, I'd like to apologize for the, the title of the talk. It's it's a, a little bit clunky, you know, but obviously a little, little, little bit of fun, but the subtitle is more serious. So yeah, uh, uh, I'm gonna maybe, I uh, hope I don't bring things down in uh, uh, Europe here, it's, uh, it's er early in the morning, but uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever, wherever you are. Um, so Pitapalooza has been incredibly successful. Crossref uh, was one of the founding organiza organizations, and we we uh, help help organize it. I've got my Pitapalooza uh, T-shirt, and I'm very proud of my uh, badge collection from uh, previous pre previous meetings. So you know it's fantastic to bring this community together, and 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 such fantastic talks uh, at, at at all the meetings. And, um, but I wanna highlight uh, some of the problems with a narrow focus on, on PIDs, which I think is too, too common in our, our, our community. Uh, and I think that this means that we, we inadvertently uh, imbue the identifier strings themselves with, with almost magical, magical properties. Uh, so the message is often, you know, get a PID, <clears throat> rather than focusing on uh, the problems uh, that 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 need to be solved, and and also the importance of metadata uh, and the importance of the the connections that are in the metadata, uh, these things do come up in a lot of talks. We just heard a great great talk from Gareth about <clears throat> fair data, uh, but it's but it's it's that I think we have to start talking about that that bigger picture uh, even 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 more. Um, and then, uh, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Do do a little do a little quiz. But uh, a couple other points I'm going to make is that uh, Crossref is not a PID provider, uh, and we don't mint identifiers. So I'll be coming coming back to uh, uh, to make the case uh, on there. So first of all, uh, I would like to do a uh, a quiz. So <clears throat> this is about uh, uh, DOIs. So if you go over uh, to, to Menti and enter that code, I'll give everybody a minute to do that. And then I'll share my screen uh, with, with the questions as well. And then, and then we'll come back to the presentation. So, uh, but to, to illustrate some of the issues uh, and some of the danger, I think, of sort of branding kids and sort of imbuing them with these powers, uh, you know, in and of, in and of themselves, uh, let's, let's, we can go over and uh, do the quiz. And hopefully the sharing will continue on my screen so I can go to what I uh, prepared a little a little earlier. So great, I can see people are coming in. So we've got 20, 22, great. I'll give everybody another minute to, uh, uh, to get in there and then I will uh, uh, start the quiz. Now each question is uh, uh, timed. Uh, so I think you have 20, 20 seconds to answer and then we'll see the results at the end. L little bit of fun, I don't think it's too, 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 too difficult. So oh, we've got a lot of people, so uh, great. So I will I will start uh, the quiz quiz here, and then there's going to be a leaderboard to see who uh, who is going here. So we've got now the first question: Is this a DOI? So look at what's displayed there. Is that a DOI? Multiple choice questions here. Yes, no, uh, I don't know. So you have a little bit longer, maybe a little over 20 seconds, but watch the countdown clock. And what I'll do is <clears throat> once we're done the quiz, you'll see the answers now, but. I'll come back and explain why, uh, what the correct answer is, and why it's why it's the correct answer. So five seconds, three, two, one, times up. Okay, great. Uh, so, yes, no, I don't know. Well, the correct answer is I don't know. I'll come back to that in a minute to explain. But right now, we'll move on to the uh, to the next question. Okay, here we go for the uh, for the next question. I hope. Oh no, we have the we have the leaderboard. I may have jumped ahead here, so hold on. Uh, great. So if if you remember what your uh, what your name is, oh, we skipped a question. So let me let me go back here. Hold on.
Okay, here we go with question two. <clears throat> so is this, a, is this legit? Is it a legitimate citation? So it's, it's a common citation format uh, that you might often see online. So, so is, is this a legitimate citation? So we've got the countdown clock here for you. Okay, time's up. Let's see what uh, people got for that. So we have uh, yes, no, highly unlikely. I don't know, I need more information is the, uh, is, is the correct answer. And as I mentioned before, we will uh, uh, we'll come back to that. Okay, now uh, I think we'll show the leaderboard after uh, after two rounds. Okay, so we have somebody who's uh, quite in the lead there. Uh, a lot of people uh, on a thousand points, but we've got Josh in the lead with uh, with two thousand points. Well done. So we'll we'll go on then to the uh, third question. There are four four questions, so not too much longer. <laughs> uh, and then here we go. So I've got the hang of Mentimeter now. So here's, here's another question. This is a DOI, so I'm telling you it is actually a DOI. Uh, what does it identify? A journal article, a data set, a movie? I don't know, I need more information. So let's see what this, uh, let's see what this says. Okay, time's up, let's see. Okay, on that one, I think many more people got the uh, the correct answer there. It's, I don't know, I need more information. Now, the other correct answer, which a few people got is, it is actually uh, a movie. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll come, back, <laughs> come back to that. Uh, but obviously from the DOI string itself, sitting there, you can't, you can't tell what it is, uh, unless you are uh, a real PID nerd. So can funders mint DOIs with Crossref? Yes, no, I don't know. So 12 11 seconds there. Okay, time's up. Okay, and I Selected the right answer as the as the the quiz master here is as as saying no. So uh, again, I'll come back to explain that. So a little little bit of fun. It's good to see everybody voting. Thank you, and uh, obviously we'll uh, share these along with the slides uh, on Figshare after after we're done. So I will move back to uh, my presentation here. Okay, great, thanks. So now I will explain <laughs> what I was getting at with some of these quiz quiz uh, questions. So the question question one is 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 this a, a DOI? I think the correct answer is I don't know. It looks like it might be a DOI. It certainly has the form that many DOIs take, but uh, it's how do we know it's not just uh, know that it's a made up string of numbers, which actually it is. I just made it up. So uh, if we uh, go and do the uh, uh, what we would do normally with what we think might be a DOI is we can check through the central DOI resolver. Uh, and if we click on that, uh, we go to uh, an error page. Okay. And so it says the DOI cannot be found in the system. Actually, it says the DOI prefix can't be found. So uh, it's actually not a DOI. And, and so I can quickly find out uh, by by using the service associated with uh, with with DOIs, one of, one of the services associated uh, with with that. So it shows the danger of using the, the form or appearance of the string itself, right? To to read something, read something into it. So the PID on its own isn't isn't very useful. Uh, but we have services to help us figure these things out. So question two, this is a citation. I I made a few changes to it, but it but it was a citation I did find online and it's got a DOI, looks looks perfectly legitimate. And so if I do what I did before, uh, uh, it's uh, and follow follow the DOI. Uh, try to resolve it. Uh, I get the same error message. But I can go to another service, which is something that Crossref uh, provides. And again, there's some assumptions that are going in here because somebody might think, okay, I know Crossref registers uh, most of the journal articles, uh, and uh, so we would um, 
uh, if we follow uh, the Crossref API link, uh, we get a very quick answer. Uh, and, and it says re resource not uh, not found, uh, which means it's not a DOI. Uh, Crossref doesn't know it. Now, it could be that it hasn't been registered yet. Uh, but uh, but in this case, because it's it's not resolving, uh, you could do a Google search for it maybe. And actually, if you do a Google, Google search, you would find this. So somebody's created a DOI-like string to make it look like a DOI, and they're not a Crossref member. So there are problems, again, with uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the DOI becoming that, that, that symbol, right, of, of, of scientific, scientific quality. But it's very easy to find out uh, if, if, it, if it is, in fact, uh, legitimate. So question three, uh, I told you it was the DOI. What does it identify? So as many people probably know, uh, there are different registration agencies. Uh, this is an IDER, the Entertainment Identifier Registry. Uh, uh, there are 10 different registration agencies, but this is for film and TV content, really fantastic application. Uh, it's used in online uh, streaming of TV and film, and it's a more of a supply chain identifier. Uh, and so this is what you get if you actually follow the DOI uh, and resolve the DOI for this. You can see here that um, that uh, it's uh, got a lot of other information. I think what's great about this is it captures some standardized metadata. It has lots of other identifiers, lots of connections, uh, and 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 it's really use uh, re really useful. So again, standard metadata uh, connecting to services starts to uh, make things uh, make things happen. Oh, and sorry, it's uh, the movie's Raising Arizona, one of, one of my favorite films. Uh, and uh, but you can see they also do versioning really well in this. So good, good, really good example uh, uh, that DOIs aren't scholarly, uh, just scholarly, right? And um, uh, so question four, uh, can funders mint DOIs with, uh, with, with Crossref? So I think that I have to pause a little bit on this and just explain a little bit that uh, uh, why I think uh, my problem with, with the term mint identifiers and why I don't like to say Crossref mints uh, identifiers. So funders can register their, their grants with Crossref. Uh, so this involves signing up as a member, agreeing to a set of obligations, and a main obligation is to register a set of metadata for their awards and grants. So this includes a, D a DOI, which is a PID, uh, but it, the metadata and then connecting that metadata into the services that we provide and other people using that metadata uh, in, in the wider infrastructure, uh, that's that's the important part of what we're doing. So minting an identifier implies that you're just getting a number. Once you get the number, you're done. Ah, oh, I've got the number. I'm done. And and I think that's a we see that sometimes uh, with uh, with 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 publishers. And uh, I know a lot of time researchers, right? They just they're sometimes pushed into it. Oh, I've I've got to get a number. Uh, and now a number on its own, as long as even if it's connected to a basic resolution service, that could be useful. But you're getting the most value when there's metadata, when there's services. Uh, and I think this is picking up on the fair fair data point that Gareth was making. And um, you know, being able to reuse these things in a machine readable way for AI and other applications. So, uh, so I, I, th I think saying you mint an identifier strips strips all that strips all that away. So I did want to show the benefits of metadata inf infrastructure and show a positive view on on uh, on on DOI uh, use. So this is from a, a DOI from a Crossref member. I can resolve it to the content there. Uh, and, and then I could also get a set of metadata from Crossref, and this is where things I think start to get really, really interesting. Uh, so we have, uh, I've just pulled this out from the from the response from the Crossref API. So we've got uh, licensing information. I can see it's CC BY, so it's open access. Uh, there's 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 a, a timestamp related to that. I can see that it's a VOR version of record uh, that can help distinguish it from preprints and other types of things. Uh, there's funder information, so there's an actual uh, funder uh, registry. ID there, so uh, connecting the publication to the funding, fantastic. Uh, set of ORCIDs, uh, they're, they're, this article actually not, I think 80% of the authors have, have, have ORCIDs here. Uh, that can then uh, enable great things like automatically pushing notification of this to the researchers' uh, records, uh, ORCID records. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, references, a set of open references, which can feed things like uh, 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 open citations, which is a great, great project, and uh, this is this this is all reusable. And more recently, we've been getting uh, abstracts. Uh, so, uh, so this just shows this this rich metadata available through uh, uh, through th through a service and 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 connected into this connected into this infrastructure is really important. I also want to mention uh, Data Site Commons. They've been doing some great work uh, on this. 
And uh, they've been uh, indexing lots of different data sources, Crossref included. And you can see here that I can now go in with the ROAR, in in the, the ROAR organization ID, but uh, we've also got cross-linked with, uh, with other identifiers here as well. And uh, we can see it connected to the works and, and the publications, it connects to data. There's a supplementary data set. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's quite a lot of information. We can see download information, citations. Uh, you can see down here, uh, again, information from Crossref that data sites been able to pull because this is all open. And uh, so I would encourage you to take a look at this because I think this is, this is really important going forward that uh, the one quibble I would have here is I would say it's not, it's not a PID graph, it's a knowledge graph. And again, I think we need to move away from this, this you know, obviously we keep talking about PIDs, but I think we have to have that have that broader conversation. So uh, my my points uh, today are: uh, I think PIDs are often uh, incorrectly presented as ends in themselves. Uh, the strings themselves are imbued with the, these magical properties, and I think there, there's problems with that. Uh, the PID has become too much the center of attention, so I think we need focus on. Uh, metadata services, organizations, and infrastructure, and and really, it's about solving problems and making things easier for researchers. Researchers, so you know, you're saying, um, oh, we, um, uh, uh, you know, oh, you have to you have to get a DOI or you have to use a PID. It's it's more that you want your content to be discoverable. You want to have it properly cited. So you know, all all, all those types of uh, uh, good things, and then the the way you do that is is by uh, 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 getting uh, PIDs might be part of the solution, right? So uh, there are also very, very many different use cases for PIDs. Uh, you know, some of them could be ephemeral. Uh, we've heard, and, and I think that's what comes out of PIDA is how, how wide the use cases are, which is, which is, it's really fantastic. But uh, we want to try to change the conversation a little bit, a broader focus on open scholarly uh, uh, infrastructure. So, uh, Catherine Skinner's session the other yesterday uh, mentioned this as well, but uh, there's these things called the principles of open scholarly infrastructure. Uh, they uh, were originally uh, put forward uh, in 2015 by Cameron Nayland, Jeffrey Builder, and Jennifer Lynn. Jeffrey and Jennifer were at Crossref at the time. Uh, Jeffrey's still still at Crossref, uh, but the um, they were inspired by the ORCID principles. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion of them, and uh, they've they've we've now codified them and uh, put them into uh, uh, on on its own website here. And they cover a couple of key areas uh, that I think are really important, and we need to have a have broader discussions about this about governance, uh, sustainability, and insurance. Uh, and I won't go into the details here, but uh, but please go have a look. We want to have we want to have a conversation around. Uh, these uh, these these principles and the whole point of this right is su is supporting open uh, supporting open uh, open research. So uh, Crossref, the Crossref board uh, adopted uh, POSI, uh, the principles of open scholarly infrastructure. Uh, Jeffrey Builder uh, did a blog post where we assessed ourselves against uh, the uh, against POSI, uh, and uh, we don't meet all of them. Uh, but we we are working towards it, and so we think that some of these things are aspirational. They're goals. Not not everybody can meet them all the time, but we're hoping other organizations will do the same. Uh, and I'm happy to say that uh, uh, Dryad uh, has has committed to the principles uh, and done their own uh, assessment against these, and uh, also uh, Roar, which is great. Uh, Crossref's invo in, involved in Roar, uh, but uh, uh, but I think this is uh, really important. Also, getting back to uh, what some of the uh, topics that Catherine Skinner brought up again about trust in 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 systems, and I think by just saying, "Oh, it's a PID," "Oh, it's a DOI," that's a, that's all I need to know. You know, maybe some people don't care, but I think there's a whole area that Posey addresses that, that to demonstrate why. There's trust. Why are these things sustainable? Why are there persistence? What, you know, go open governance. All all these really critical critical uh, factors that are that are really important. Uh, the other thing I think we should uh, talk about a little bit more is metadata. Uh, there was a talk here uh, uh, at uh, Pitapalooza about uh, metadata 2020. Uh, there's a new new website available and a, a refocus and a kind of a distillation of the great work that metadata 2020 has been doing. Uh, and and the new website is framed around uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and uh, but it, a rich catalog of of actions people can take, uh, some advocacy, but also 
uh, the outputs from the Metadata 2020 uh, project. And I think this connects in very well with, with Posey as well, because again, you know, what's, what's, what's the point of all of this? You know, we're all uh, working uh, to, to make the scholarly research ecosystem, uh, ecosystem better. And, uh, and, and so I think that's, that's really important and I think we need to talk about it more. So I just did a quick, very unscientific uh, uh, survey. I, I, I went to all the, all the session talks for this Pitapalooza uh, and, and just searched the titles of the talks, uh, not, not the abstracts, but uh, PID, the term PID was used 158 times. Uh, metadata was used eight and infrastructure was used four. So in future, I'd like to see that, that change. And, and metadata in, in infrastructure get uh, a much uh, much higher rating. So just a, a couple of slides to finish up. Uh, Crossref, we're not a PID provider. We provide uh, open foundational scholarly infrastructure. Uh, uh, we've there are a set of principles there. There are a number of number of organizations who are involved with this. So we want this to be very very collaborative. Uh, we need to talk a little bit more about uh, infrastructure, metadata, and services. And uh, and uh, the the services, the uh, uh, machine read readability, uh, dissemination of of, of metadata uh, to capture this knowledge this knowledge graph and improve the research ecosystem. So and then just a vision of where 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 we want to go. And I hope I think this this will resonate with people. But we want an integrated, efficient, sustainable, comprehensive, open scholarly infrastructure. Uh, all research activities and outputs, researchers, organizations having persistent identifiers, rich standard, open metadata a network of relationships available through human and machine interfaces, uh, enabling an open and broadly governed research ecosystem, uh, which makes research outputs easy to find, site link, assess, and reuse, which will support open research. And I think this is key, right? Enabling researchers to focus on research, making things easier for them, uh, and, and, and ultimately make uh, uh, it, it advance uh, human knowledge. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. And I will, I will finish there and, and uh, see if we have any, uh, any questions. Cool, thanks Ed. Yep, there are a couple of questions. Um, first one from Alex Hardesty asking, is there a single place to go to to search across the metadata for all DOIs and if not, why not? Yes, and I think uh, there isn't yet. <laughs> uh, There's some common services that operate across a number of the DOIs, uh, uh, but I th think that uh, the the uh, registration agencies have, have uh, uh, operated fa fairly separately with their systems, but we need to change that. And data site commons is a step in the right direction. So we are talking about a common DOI search, but I think it, you know, we have to think of the applications as well because uh, uh, you know, the movie industry, there may be some connections. I think there's a, a new application coming along for DOIs in the, in the British construction industry. So you know, obviously there's some benefit in combining scholarly, uh, scholarly uh, uh, information uh, that's that's registered by the uh, the current registration agencies, but so yeah, more more work needed on that. But 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 there are plans uh, to to try and improve that a common DOI search, building off of data site commons, uh, and uh, yeah, letting letting people uh, uh, have have those combined services. It's yeah, I agree. It's a little too fragmented at the moment, so we want to want to collaborate to change to change that. Mm. Um, the second question that came in, so um, from from Tom, I suspect Tom Damaranville, um, oh. as open infrastructure, how do you balance the need for making metadata publicly available in a reliable manner with the need for cost recovery via paid for higher SLA services? Tom is asking for a friend. I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, criti critical critical issue. Sustainability is really really important. You know, Posey says you know you shouldn't use. Uh, time-limited grant funds to fund, you know, persistent infrastructure, uh, and uh, yeah, that's tricky. Roar, Roar uh, is working on that now. Uh, the Crossref approach is that we've, we've, you know, the metadata is open. It wasn't always open <laughs> for our first, you know, ten years or so. The only way you could get the metadata was by by being a member. Uh, but the metadata is open, and yeah, we 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 have content registration fees, but also uh, looking at uh, service level agreements. Uh, there are a lot of organizations who want to integrate this into production systems and they want guaranteed uptime uh, 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 rate limits higher you know rate limits and things like that so you want to provide a really good decent open service and then and then yeah find some of those extra enhanced features 
that that isn't restricting the data, right? So we 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 it's about the service level, not the metadata. Everybody should be able to get the same level of metadata, uh, but but not necessarily. This is this is in our case, but uh, uh, yeah. So you have to you have to maybe uh, find 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 ways to. Uh, uh, to, to to cover those costs, and it's something that just takes constant work and uh, uh, modeling and uh, uh, changing as 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 things go on. Cool. And the last question I think we have time for. Um, so from um, from Keys is: Would it be possible to implement these principles and in infrastructure using a DA, uh, a DAO, decentralized autonomous organization? Yeah, the the no, I don't think so. <laughs> I think I think depending on the application or what you're trying to achieve, uh, you know, you could decentralized identifiers. Ha I think have have their applications, but but I think in 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 the open scholarly infrastructure context in the research ecosystem, I think you know you you have some decentralized uh, things where people want to, uh, you know, if somebody at uh, you know has massive amounts of data. And and they want to organize things internally, or or uh, you know you can think of different applications. But I have yet to see uh, an, an, anything in a decentralized way that would serve the research ecosystem. Right? I I, I just haven't haven't seen seen any practical application for how that how that might work. And uh, we can provide some links about that. Cross reference Jeffrey Builder in particular commented on that uh, commented on on that in the past. So short answer, no. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So there, uh, there might well have been some questions in the chat as well. So there is in the Slack, there is a Q and A channel um, where all of the speakers will be able to will be able to pick up on any questions later on. Um, I want to thank Ed for a thought provoking talk. I agree that we do need to have more conversations about the principles for open infrastructure across the community, um, and. Yeah, there's, there's um, to Ed's point, there's there's lots of ongoing work to do there. Um, so again, thanks to all our speakers. Thanks to Ed for wrapping us up um, this morning. Um, again, virtual round of applause, please. And I will let you escape to the next sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.